Hi again, welcome to another video and in today's video we're going to be having a look at Tanaka hedge trimmer. The engine starts and runs well but when you rev it the blades don't rotate. Um, so yeah, I think there's something up in the gearbox, um, possibly clutch but I'll delve into the gearbox first to see if I can see anything wrong and then we'll go from there. Um, but first, um, if this is the first time you've been to my channel please um, subscribe and like. Um, it'd be much appreciated and also if you'd like to support my channel I do have an Amazon wish list it's um, linked in the comments below and if you want to have a browse through there and you feel like buying me a, a little gift um, it'd be much appreciated it helps the channel um, and yeah that would be great so yeah we'll get on with this Tanaka hedge trimmer and see if we can get these blades to rotate So here it is, the Tanaka hedge trimmer, and yeah, the blades just don't move when I start it up. It does start up okay. I'll see if I can just show you. It might shake around a little bit, so I do apologize, but I have had it started. So as you can see, they're not moving. So the first job on this one, um, if I can get the blades working, I'll service it up and yeah, it'll be a good machine. But obviously the first thing I need to look at, to see what's wrong uh, with the blades and why they're not rotating. So I'll just get you positioned round, tip the hedge trimmer up on its side, and then we'll have a look. Well, I've cracked them all off now, so they're all loose. I'll just undo them. So you've just seen I've undone all of them. I haven't took that off yet. I'll take it off in a second. It could be a clutch issue. Something could be seized in there. I have had the sort of cog that comes out the bottom seized before, but we ain't gonna know till we look in there. So let's peel this off. See what's what. Well, it looks a bit dry in there and has that stripped that thread on that, on that cog there i think that could be the problem so that means it might not be worth repairing sorry i just bang the camera there. what is it savable to me ah that cog will come off yeah it shredded all them teeth off of there <laughs> Can you get that cog on its own? Don't like machines beating me, but this one, you can see in there better. You can see all the shavings that have come off of the cog and you can see the cog there. Maybe if I get it upright. That is what I feared would be wrong with it. You can see the teeth are nice there. And then on there, not good. So, does it even turn? I don't know whether that would be available to buy. Probably would be. Is it worth me repairing this or just taking the engine off and um, just not bothering? <laughs> uh, I'll decide. I need to get it off to look anyway, so we can go from there now. I'll just put the cover back on at the moment and then I'll have a little Google and just see if I can get the part. Because uh, these are all right hedge cutters, they're not bad, but you know, it depends how that comes off, it depends what's involved. I'll probably have to disconnect the engine on them bolts there, take it all off, and then look at it from in there. But yeah, we'll see. Might be saved, might not be. I don't know about this one, uh, but I had to take it off to have a look, and then yeah, we'll go from there. When I uh, took the engine off, I'll show you that when I do that anyway. So I've just undone the bolts that um, connect the engine to the sort of gearbox. Um, two are like that, Allen key, and two are just nuts. It has started to fall apart a bit, but I haven't even looked yet. So I can just probably just lift that off now, like so. So we've got that bit now. 
I would assume, yeah, that was seized. So that would be the bit I'd have to replace if I could even get it. I don't know how it's held in there um, because I would assume, just see if I can separate the engine from the rest of the bits. Should only be a throttle cable. Pull it out like so. That should come off and there's just, yeah, so the throttle one's disconnected. That should pull out and there's just a throttle cable one there. So that separated the engine totally away from the gearbox side of things. So now I would assume there's like a sort of a C clip, circle clip, whatever you want to call them, uh, in there to probably go on. Then a whole lot would tap through there. And I might just be able to buy the cup bit, but I can't see. I really uh, broke that gasket, it's a bit annoying. Yeah, it does. It has a C clip in there. I can see it. So um, if I can get that off, gasket is not massively important. I could make one of them if need be. The problem is with these old things, um, you need to try and keep, uh, well, I need to try and keep the costs down. I don't want to be throwing silly money at a machine like this. If I could repair it for, say, twenty five pound, I would. But if it's going to cost me sort of 30, 40 pounds, I'm not going to bother. If I can move that clip round, it would be easier. I have a little bit. It's going. You have to have to ruin the gasket now. You can just see in there a sir clip. Whether I can get that out or not. My removal tools ain't the best really to be honest. You just got a bit of an overview at the moment. I'll tr Come on. Oh, I think I've started it. Yeah, I've got it up there a little bit. Maybe if I put you in from that angle. I'll just probably see better now because my hand won't be in the way. off so now i'm thinking probably i'm not actually doing the damage if i tap that through i'll try to let's just lift it up so you don't that's what happened i think there's a bearing and then the bearing seized um well that isn't no good anyway yeah it's not that good anyway so it's not really going to matter how i get it off because it's um, if I can put some grip around it or something, because it's going to have to have a little piece in there anyway. So let's just put the mold grip around it and just see if there's any sort of movement. Which there is a bit. Sorry, we, we will shake around a little bit now because um, I've got to try and... ruin the cup but to be honest i'm not really that bothered um what happens here really it's just a matter of getting it out and having a look and then see if i can do something with it it's going to need a new it is moving in there i think it might be a case i've just got i've just got to hit that hard with a punch and get that out and then it'd be a new bearing and that new cup with the Uh, cog on the end so off camera i'm gonna try and do that off camera because it's hard to do it with of trying to film and bashing things around with a hammer so i'll be back with you but all i'm just going to be basically doing is hitting it there to get it out of the bearing well i'm back on the tanaka hedge trimmer again i've had a delivery of a new one of these this is the old one and you can see where that wore that cog off around there that we saw earlier um and yeah got this one uh for under 10 pounds so i thought 
around a ten pound, it was worth a go. It's a second hand one, but a new one was about twenty five pounds, so I wouldn't have gone that way. But I'm hoping I can just put this in, and it should solve the problems. I'm wondering whether, when the hedge cutter was being used, somebody caught the blades on something like a metal bar or wire or something, and that's why that sheared off the edge and kept going, and that. Um, war against that cog and because that cog is probably harder metal than this this is what gave so um yeah so i'm not gonna put new bearings or anything in it because i can't go to that expense on this the new bearings and that are gonna cost and a gasket it's gonna cost me about 20 pounds try and make a gasket because i broke the old one but i'm gonna see if i can just repair it with just this part and if it's reasonable, that'll, that'll be a good result. So uh, what should I do first? I might as well just take that out first. Put that to the side. I'll try it out a gasket for a start, just put some grease in there, try it out a gasket, then I'll have to take the bottom back off and put gasket on. And take that out as well. I'm hoping that cog's okay, it looks okay. It doesn't look too bad at all. So we'll um, go with that. And if I turn it, well, you can just quickly see there. A bit glare on the camera today. Um, the bearings are free ish. Well, they're turning, I freed them off, they were seized, so um, they are better than they were. And I'll just hook out that old bit of grease. I've got some new grease um, uh, up on the shelf, so I'll get some of that to get some of that in there, and we'll see if this is a success or not. So I'll be back with you when I've just cleaned it out. So I need to get this in. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of WD-40 on there. That's sort of a, more of a sealed bearing at the top. So I'll just give it a little bit in there. The bottom one will be greased, um, but this one, um, I'll just do what I've just done. Um, just put a bit of WD-40. Then we'll get that in there. That's going to have to be tapped home with the hammer. So I'll try and do it in the of lifting it up so it won't actually... Um, shake you too much but if it does i apologize um might not be the best way to do it but that's why i'm gonna do it there's a hard bit in the middle so it should be okay sounded to me like it went home so how is that moving isn't great but it's a bit better now yeah it's better now i do think this is going to be a, a little bit rumbly i think it's going to make a little bit of a bit of a noise but i don't really want to spend too much money on this so i'm quite happy with that that's not too bad and let's see what it's like underneath Looking good. I will just check that all the all the balls are in there. I've got to put the little C clip on now, so I'll get the one off of the old one and put that put that on there. So hopefully that has tapped through as far as it should do. We'll just have to aid it with a screwdriver a little bit to see if it's gonna click in place I think it did yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with that yeah it's okay so I hope you saw that okay but it was just only putting a c-clip on anyway so now i'm gonna put this piece on i'm not sure which way it was actually on but it's a bit rustier at the bottom and i don't think it would have been i think it's that way i think it goes on that way but i'm not really sure it matters on here so get that in i'm gonna to have to move the blade slightly So I'm battling away trying to get this cog in place, um, this drive cog. Um, if I do it like that, it should be almost right, I would have thought. Ah, 
Aha, we're in. I hope you saw that, all right? So that is all in place now. It is a little bit noisy. I'm not over happy with that, but hopefully the grease will quieten it down a little bit. Like I said, I don't really want to spend much on this at all because I still want to do the, the carburetor diaphragm and put a spark plug in it. So I don't want to go over the top um, with what I'm going to spend on this. I might even have to take that cog out again, actually, because I want to pack some grease down. But I'm going to do that off camera and then I'll be back with you. And I'm going to just temporarily put the cover on at the moment. Um, and then I'll make a gasket later. So we make a gasket to save there a little bit. Um, so, yeah, be back with you when I've packed that with grease. I've packed that with grease now and I've put that little piece back on to there the bit i took out there i'm not gonna take that back out now because that's all in place um that's the grease i've used this time um i bought this and um actually says made in england that is unusual nowadays um i was told it was um very very similar to the steel um grease so it's a lot cheaper so i bought two of these actually so yeah i've got plenty of grease for these hedge cutters and it seems to be um some nice thick stuff so um it's probably good for this machine um, I'm just going to scrape off a little bit of the old grease off of the bottom plate, which I've actually done. And then that's ready to just put that back on there. Like I said, there's no gasket on it yet. I will sort out that, but I just want to get it back together, fire it up and see if it's um, any good or not. Um, I'm quite hopeful. I turned it over. Actually, I can do Actually, when I put a couple of these in, I'll actually turn it over on where that little... Um, piece I replaced a little clutch cup actually two should probably be good enough just to hold it in place you can't actually see it at the moment but that's not too noisy I don't know what it'll be like when it's going fast to speed but you can see the blades are working okay just got to um, look just to check that there isn't a blade sticking or anything because they're in, they're not brilliant I'm gonna to have to give this a sharpen the blades definitely worth saving but um, they are well worn um, in places so I'll give I'll give them a new edge and then um, yeah that should all be all be okay uh, but yeah we've got to give it a run up first just to check that they rotate okay um, under under the engine um, power, and then we can go from there. So I'm just gonna tighten up these little bolts. You haven't got to see me do that, and then I'll be back with you when I've, I'm putting the engine back on. So I won't show you me putting the whole lot of this back on, but there's just one nut there. There's a nut the opposite side, and then the back ones, I think I mentioned earlier, the back ones have like an Allen key head. Uh, but here, just get that right. This one just has a piece on there to hook around that, that cable, to get that cable out of the way. So yeah, I'll just tighten up them and then we'll see how good it actually is at rotating the blades under the engine. Um, I've done it by hand and it actually seems okay. So um, fingers crossed. We've got another machine that's saved here for a very low, low money, you know, replacing one of them, I think delivered it was about nine pounds it was under under ten pounds so um yeah that was good so i might be able to have saved this machine very cheaply so yeah just let me tighten them up and i'll be back with you so is it good news or bad news uh it's good news yay we've sorted it so now i've got the um tanaka hitched cutter at a job and i'll just start it up and show you the blades rotating because it's all it's all good now um i will uh, do a video of it on my other channel mothers and stuff at uh, some point so if you pop over there and subscribe you'll see it when it does come up but that'll be a video of it in action this is just like the repair video and yeah i'll start it up uh there's no primer on this one so all it is is choke there on throttle locked and then
So um, yeah, you can see they rotated okay. Um, I did tighten them up a little bit. I tightened them bolt up a little bit because it was a bit um, flappy up and down. So I tightened them up a bit and adjusted them. Uh, but yeah, all seems to be good with that now. I will off camera just do the diaphragm in the car. It runs okay, but I've just got to put a new one in. I like to do that if I'm going to sell a machine. So I will do that, but I've done plenty of them lately. So you'd have seen lots of them on my other videos. And then just to clean up and that should be good to go. So yeah, quite pleased with that one. That was um, quite a cheap fix in the end. Um, actually under 10 pounds for the actual part to actually do the repair, but the diaphragm will be about fiver. Spark plug will be two pounds something to three pounds. So yeah, it's not gonna cost that much to sort this one out. And yeah, it's a good machine. So thanks for watching and I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.